do we have to fast for the rest of our life? Is fasting safe for women who have a cycle? Those are just some of the questions that I'm going to be answering for you in today's video. I always try to make sure that I answer any of the questions that come through on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram page. I am the person that will actually answer them. I don't pay anybody else to do that. You're getting answers from me. But sometimes I am limited to how I can answer on just a text reply to you. So I thought I would take some of these questions that I get asked very frequently and elaborate a little bit more on the answer that I would give you if you and I were in a coaching session. So welcome to today's video. My name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, The Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman. Here in this community, I do give you the no fluff, real down to earth, me talking to you as if you were one of my best girlfriends advice about how to incorporate intermittent fasting for you as an aging woman in today's world and allow you the opportunity to create a lifestyle for yourself that allows you to look and feel your best and do that in your most authentic way. We do have a course starting on April 5th, so depending on when you are watching this video, you can find information in the description box below about how to get on my email list or join us for our course, and we generally have a course starting the first Friday of every new month, so you can just put that on your calendar for the future if this month is not good for you. So let's get into today's video. I have screenshotted uh, a bunch of of YouTube questions and I decided that I would just go ahead and answer them here in a little bit more detail like I said that I would as if I'm just typing a response to you and hopefully that will help you get some of your questions answered these are very common questions so they're not specific to any particular woman who left the comment they are pretty general and I am going to give you a very straightforward answer to hopefully um, ease your mind and have you walking away from today's video with some confidence about how you can, in fact, create an intermittent fasting lifestyle for yourself. So the first question was a general question to our entire community. Ladies, share how you're eating enough protein in these four hours. Thanks in advance. All these comments are gonna remain anonymous. I will include a screenshot of them on the screen. So if you wanna look at them while I'm answering to refresh your memory, I'll have that available for you. But the one thing that I really like to give back to you or turn back to the individual woman who's asking this type of question is, what is it that you're looking for in an answer? No one can tell you, the particular individual woman, how to eat in whatever feasting window you are deciding to eat in. That is dependent on you, the individual woman. And we really do have to start taking responsibility for ourselves as grown women who really have all the information that they need to figure out food for themselves. We just wanna rely on someone else to tell us what to do. I have been coaching women for 30 some odd years. I have given women uh, meal plans that were perfectly curated for weight loss. I have given women ideas on what to eat for food. But when life is happening, and you do not know how to think for yourself on the fly, or you do not have to think for yourself under pressure, you will always deviate to what I like to refer to as kicking yourself when you're down. You will always deviate to what you normally do when you're in a stressful situation, or you'll normally do when things aren't handed to you and you have to think on your own. It is very important for you to think on your own information about nutrition is very generalized. It is not complicated. The internet is our best friend. The grocery stores, we know how, we've been told for years, shop the perimeter, don't shop down the center aisles. If it comes in a package, it's probably not good for you. Look at the ingredients list. If the ingredients list is this long, probably not your best friend. Whole Foods is your best option. Then you get to decide with all that general information how you want to narrow that down for you. And then you have to do some experimenting. What food makes you or allows you to look and feel your best. Rinse and repeat those foods once you identify them and then you have to figure out the quantity for you. Every individual woman has her own unique needs when it comes to nutrition and when it comes to caloric reimbursement basically, right? Like we're paying our bodies back when we eat. That's our caloric reimbursement for what we're asking of our body to expend calorie wise. 
What does your body need? What's the demand of your body? You're the only one who knows. What happens, if this is the dangerous part, and I mean dangerous emotionally and mentally, when we depend on someone else to hand us something that is telling us every single step that we need to make and every single decision we need to make with our nutrition, then we have someone else to blame when it doesn't work out. If you are the woman taking responsibility for your own feasting and what you have curated and figured out makes you or allows you to look and feel your best, then you have yourself to congratulate. You can't blame anybody else for getting it wrong when you're the one making informed decisions on how your body is responding to you. So ladies, stop asking strangers on the internet to feed you. That is your own responsibility and you have to do a little bit of trial and error. This is why in this community, we work from the mindset shift approach. Mindset shift. You have to start thinking differently about taking care of yourself and stop depending on others, specifically strangers on the internet. It doesn't matter what their credentials are. Do not depend on them to feed you. You need to learn how to feed yourself. So rule number one on this, in this community, stop asking strangers to tell you what to eat. You have to do that work for yourself. You will thank yourself. You will be so glad you put in the work. You'll be so glad you gave yourself the benefit of the doubt because in the end, your body will tell you exactly what's working for you and what's not, and then you will be the one that will reap the benefits of that. So no more asking strangers on the internet what you're supposed to be eating. Okay, another one, and there's a theme of these, so I'm gonna try to group these all together. This is the general idea of this series of questions is how often do you recommend doing the 20 hour fast? I always, in my responses back in type form, is only fast on the days or only fast for 20 hours a day on those days that you want to look and feel your best. Because that's what's gonna happen if you consistently fast for 20 hours. Those days will never fail you. You will always look and feel your best. If you are looking into starting something like an intermittent fasting lifestyle and you're already looking for the date in the future that you can stop intermittent fasting, I'm gonna just give you permission right now to not even bother. Like don't even dip your toe into intermittent fasting because you're gonna approach it from a short-term diet mindset approach. And then when you stop intermittent fasting, you're gonna gain the weight back or you're gonna feel sick again or your belly fat's gonna come back or whatever it is you're trying to fix with intermittent fasting is gonna all come back as soon as you quit and then you're gonna look back and go, oh, it was intermittent fasting. No, it's because you quit. It's because you quit before you even started. If you have that limiting belief you're going to be disappointed in intermittent fasting and you're gonna sell yourself short of an amazing opportunity. Now, in this community or my style of coaching, I always say leave room for memory-making moments. But you have to be very honest with yourself about what a memory-making moment is. So a memory-making moment isn't, um, you know, Tuesday at four o'clock every day. That's not a memory-making moment. A memory-making moment is you're son or daughter is getting married and you want to spend the weekend with family at the rehearsal dinner and you want to um, take advantage of the wedding reception and you want to take advantage of the dinner that's provided and you want to have the cake that you decided to have at the wedding reception and you want to have some champagne like that's a memory making moment that is so worthy of stepping away from what you do in your normal everyday life because you're creating memories with your family and the lasting memory that we are trying to avoid is feeling like it's not fair that we aren't able to participate like everyone else. Participate, enjoy your time. Don't do anything that's gonna make you feel bad or have any regrets, but go all in and enjoy yourself. That's what memory making moments are for. Or you go on a vacation, like loosen the reins a little bit, enjoy your vacation. I teach a philosophy here of, of a vacation fasting where we don't bring it, we don't buy it, don't accept that is proving to help and serve women so beautifully when they're on trips for work or trips for vacation where we're not gaining weight anymore and we're not stressed out about food because we're thoughtful about how we're going to approach those situations. If you're looking into intermittent fasting and your brain is going to that place where you're asking questions like, how many days am I gonna have to do this? Or do I have to do this forever? You're approaching it from the wrong mindset and you already have a quit date or an end date in mind and you're going to rush back to the things you were doing before and you're going to ex have exactly those same results that you have when you're in search for something better. So be careful about the questions you're asking because you're telling your brain you're ready to quit 
before you even started. So make sure that you're wording those questions correctly for your own brain's sake. Okay, this is one um, that I also love getting and it is, I hear a few YouTubers suggest that we may, we may need to 36 hour fast occasionally to get things moving. What are your thoughts? My thoughts and my experience with coaching women is if you always have the 36 hour fast as you're out to get things moving, then you're gonna rely on a 36 hour fast to undo things as your permission to do things that are gonna put you in that position. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you might say to yourself, oh, I'm gonna go do all these things on the weekend, I'm gonna not fast, I'm gonna do happy hour, I'm gonna eat all the things, and I'm gonna just live it up on the weekend, and every Monday I'm just gonna do a 36 hour fast. In my opinion, and what I've experienced as a coach with women, is that breeds habit or a concept or an emotional setup in your brain of a binge purge type of relationship that you have with food. I'm gonna do all these things that I normally aren't gonna do because I know they're not good for me, and then I'm gonna rely on this really long fast that I normally don't do, and I'm gonna deny myself food to make up for all those decisions that I'm now maybe wishing I didn't do or, or I know aren't good for me. Why not just breed consistency? Fasting consistently over time is the best thing that you can do for yourself because your body's going to learn to trust you and you're not gonna have these types of cycles, especially if you're someone who's constantly weighing themselves. So you have this all in approach on whatever over the weekend, you don't have any limitations, you're not ruling anything out, you go a little overboard. Usually if you do that on a weekend, by Wednesday, your weight's gonna go up. You deny yourself food for a couple of days, your weight goes down, and then your weight's gonna go back up again. That's yo-yo dieting, but we're doing it in almost an extreme way. So I always say that the fast is never the thing that becomes a problem for you unless you've stopped fasting. It's always what you're doing in your feasting window. So if you feel the need to deny yourself food for 36 hours to get things moving, I would highly recommend being really honest with what you're doing in your feasting window and maybe tracking for a couple of days. Where are you letting little things sneak in or where are you maybe not being really honest with yourself? When I coach women and we get down to the nitty gritty of these kinds of conversations, usually what happens is they have the aha moment. Oh yeah, I really haven't been fasting for 20 hours. Oh yeah, I have been putting stuff back in my coffee. Oh yeah, I'm not drinking my water. And then when they get right back on track with what they know that they're supposed to do or what they know uh, was working for them when they were actually implementing it in a very deliberate way, then we take away the need for that 36 hour fast. You don't have to do anything drastic to get things moving. You have to be consistent and honest. This is one that I went back and forth with a little bit in the comment section, but I wanna talk about it in a little more detail here um, in this video. And it is, I'm 47 and still have a cycle. How long should I fast? Is it safe to do a 20 hour fast every day? The only way that even fasting could be unsafe is if, and it has nothing to do with fasting, it has to do with what you're doing in your feasting window, right? Like. What are you feasting on that's gonna be harmful for you? I know there's a lot of books in circulation and I know there are other platforms who um, talk specifically to women who are still having their cycle and how we're supposed to do things when we have our cycle. And I know when I was 20 years younger, um, when I was even still trying to have kids, I used intermittent fasting to balance out my body. I have used fasting on and off my entire adult life. I have always worked out in a fasted state. Like it's just part of who I am and what makes me look and feel my best. I have never considered anything that I do unsafe and I don't consider anything that I teach unsafe. Going without food for a certain amount of hours in our day is not unsafe. And then what I also like to have you consider if you're thinking along these lines or you're listening to people who are saying those words to you is what other things in your life are you doing that you don't pose that same question to? Are you having cocktails on a Friday night? 
Are you eating things out of a box that are highly processed? Or do you have things in your environment that might not be safe? Are you watching things on TV that are unhealthy and could be unsafe? Like there's a million things that we can deem as unsafe, but is that necessary? If it feels good to you, if you're getting results that you love, that is all that matters. And this is why I am always encouraging women here in our community to shut down a lot of this noise. If there are words being used like safe or unsafe, consider the source. Why are they saying that? And have you experimented with something on your own? Did it feel unsafe? Did you not feel well? Like what were some things that you questioned or did you just hear something and then have a reaction? So we wanna make sure that we're not reacting to things that don't apply to us. Fasting is totally safe. You have to approach it from a healthy mindset so that you feel confident in what it is you're doing for yourself. Okay, so I know I talked about this already, but I wanna address this question specifically because it asks how, about how long we should fast in a different way. So it's, is this for the rest of our life or just to lose all the excess fast and then maintenance IF is different. So the way I like to answer this question is go back to your life. I have been doing this for eight, nine years now. The 20 hour fast is like my little secret weapon. It's the thing I always keep in my hip pocket. It's the thing that I always reach for when I wanna look and feel my best. It's, it's my go-to. It's the foundation of everything that I do. All the other fasting protocols are when I'm just not fasting 20 hours. It's usually just because something else is going on in my life. I don't necessarily do it like in a deliberate way to take a break from fasting. The other thing we wanna consider, just like all temporary lifestyle changes. If you did a very specific set of things, and got very specific results from those things, and then you stop doing those things, guess what's gonna happen to your results? They're gonna go away. So if you practice a specific fasting lifestyle and you change some things in your nutrition and you did some things with your fitness and you started upping your water intake and you created this really nice rhythm of healthy lifestyle changes and then you walk away from those, you are going to lose your results. That's just the truth. So again, what is it that you're so eager to walk away from? Or are you just wanting to confirm that if I do this and it works, I can continue to do this? And so if that is the question you're asking, I say 100% you can continue to do this. And then in a couple more questions, I'm gonna answer this in just a little bit different fashion also. Okay, so here's a, another, um, pretty common question that I see around our community. And that is, does it make sense to 19.5 IF only five days a week? I don't know. You're the only one that's gonna be able to determine if that makes sense for you. For me, no. I don't ever limit myself to like a weekday style of fasting and then a weekend style of fasting. And again, from my personal experience as a coach, coaching thousands of women here in our community, if you stop fasting on the weekend, then what usually happens is that sets in, the decisions you make over the weekend usually set in on a Wednesday, a couple of days after the weekend, and then you're all bummed out and angry about fasting. You're only gonna think it's because of fasting. You forget that you stopped fasting or you did different things on the weekend, and then you're chasing your tail to get to Friday, and then Friday you stop fasting. So you're really not even practicing an intermittent fasting lifestyle because you're constantly trying to make up for lost time. Figure out a fasting protocol that will work for you seven days a week. Tell your brain that's what you're going to do and then allow for those memory making moments because there are going to be times where life is going to present opportunities that we really want to partake in. And if we're doing something consistently over time, your fasting protocol, then stepping away for a memory making moment is not going to cause a hiccup in the matrix. Like you're going to be fine. You're not even going to notice that you had a day or an event or a lunch or a dinner that interrupted your flow. So the consistency part of seven days a week and telling your brain that this is just how you show up for yourself in the best possible way then you can allow for those other opportunities to fall into your schedule or your routine or your lifestyle and you won't even notice anything. So don't limit yourself. Give yourself the full range of opportunity. Okay, 
Another common question I hear, especially for us menopausal women, is I have heard that women in menopause should not fast over 12 to 14 hours. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is that is just complete BS. Like why would we only be limited to fasting for 12 to 14 hours? And then you would have to assume that for the other, you know, 12 hours or 10 hours that the individual woman who is in menopause has got her nutrition so dialed in and she has her macros so dialed in that not fasting literally at all I mean we know that 12 to 14 hours is really just going without food it's not really giving your body the opportunity to be in a fasted state I'll include a video where I describe what a fasted state is um, that's just too much to assume like and why do we want to do all that work fasting is the best way to do nothing and reap all the benefits that fasting has to offer. So why would you not just lean in? And why are we singling out menopausal women? We just need to stop doing that and give us the best opportunity and all the same opportunities everybody else has. And then the other thing to consider about being in menopause is our life is different and our hormones are different. Just stick around this channel. I describe and talk about this all the time. The, the woman that you are in menopause, energy-wise, physical demand-wise, is so much different than the woman that you were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. I mean, what I do as a woman at 58 is so much different than I did as a woman at 28, like energy demand-wise. Do I need to eat for 10 to 12 hours a day? No, I don't. Anybody who's singling out a group of people, be weary of them. And then ask yourself, does this apply to me or do I feel like I could benefit from, you know, playing around with the fasting uh, lifestyle? Pay attention to some of the comments and the forums that you're hanging out in. What are the women talking about? What kind of results are they getting? And then lean into that. Those are the women that are just like you. Those are the women that you should be getting advice from the women who are doing it and reaping the benefits. Okay, I'm gonna close out with this question because this one always gets me too. A few studies suggest not to stick to one method of fasting with the idea that the body holds on to fat once it gets used to the fasting pattern, that it is best to change the hours now and again, sometimes do 16-8, then sometimes 22-2, then 24. What's your advice on this, please? So I don't know what kind of magical life these people are living that are giving this advice, but there's no two days in my life that are ever exactly the same. And this type of advice would imply that your days are always exactly the same. My sleep schedule is different. My exercise demands are different. Um, what I have to do in the course of a day is different. My stress levels are different. The food I eat is different. So how stuck or how, um, or how complacent will my body become if I fast every day for 20 hours? when everything else in my life is not constant. It's always shifting, it's always changing. Like, it also implies that your body is just never in motion, right? Like nothing's ever changing. And again, that's not true. I believe that a lot of this advice comes from people just being bored and having nothing else to talk about. It is the simplest thing to do, y'all. Fast for 20 hours and really listen and pay attention to your body when you're in your feasting window. What works for you? Are you thriving in the carnivore lifestyle? Go live your carnivore life. Are you thriving with the vegan lifestyle? Go live your vegan lifestyle. Are you thriving with a combination of all those things? Have you found your groove with fasting and socializing and, and memory making moments and being able to vacation? Have you lost the weight? Have you got your energy back? Are you feeling confident in your own skin? then just keep doing those things. We just are not that complex of species. Like, it's super simple, y'all. And no two days with your body chemistry or your hormonal makeup will ever be exactly the same. If you're worried about it being the same, what I highly recommend doing is doing some sort of testing. Like I do lumen testing, I do blood glucose and ketone testing. I'm currently testing out a continuous glucose monitor. My body's changing every five minutes. Like nothing is ever the same. So this advice about having to switch things up, I think is just to keep people from being bored or to have something to talk about on the internet. It is simple. Fast for 20 hours, 
clean if you are really trying to reverse some metabolic conditions or you're trying to reverse or improve some cellular things that you might have going on in your body. Once you find your fasting rhythm, once you find some comfort and security with your fasting, once you've figured out all of the food um, things that you had going on and you've really dialed in your nutrition, then you can just kind of let it flow and you can ebb and flow your way in and out of fasting and you won't have any of this mental drama and you won't have any of this emotional drama and more importantly you'll be able to handle your life this is what we're aiming for here in this community when life throws you a curveball why is it that you are seeking out information from strangers on the internet? Why is it you're blaming the wrong things for where you are ending up with your weight or how you're feeling? It always comes back to the decisions that we are making when we are feeling a certain way and it always stems from what's going on in our life. Women who have had amazing results with intermittent fasting but used it as a diet and then had something happen in their life that threw them off track have walked away from one of the simplest lifestyles because they simply didn't manage their mindset. Manage your mindset. Question these kind of things that you hear on the internet. How does it apply to me? And does that seem like it's going to fit into my lifestyle? I don't have time to manage my calendar and wonder what day I'm fasting for 20, what day I'm fasting for 16, and guessing if my body is stuck. We're not that in tune with our bodies to anticipate our body being stuck, and that's why we're not losing weight. If you're not losing weight, it's because the decisions you are making around your feasting window, it is 99.9% .9 always what it is you're doing in your feasting window and how you're allowing yourself to tell yourself little lies about the food choices you're making and then blaming it on something else. Steady fasting, whatever protocol you choose that works for you is fine for you. But if you're choosing a protocol and you're not getting results or you're taking advice from someone and you're not getting results, question what you are doing and be open-minded to try something else. You've got this. You are fully capable of making decisions on your own. You're fully capable of understanding how your own body works. It's talking to you. Sometimes it's screaming at you. We need to quiet ourselves down, slow things down, trust the process, and then get in tune with ourselves. I promise you, you are gonna love the results. This is how I coach inside the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course. I am not a cookie cutter approach type of coach. I am not going to hand you a meal plan and say, this is what I think you should eat, because girlfriend, I don't know you well enough to do that to you. And I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. What I will do is I will give you all the information that you need to make informed decisions for yourself, and then I will support you along the way on your journey. I hope to see you in class soon. If you haven't jumped into class with us if you are a graduate do me a favor leave a comment below about your experience inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course let these women know that it is super simple and that if you stick to the basics you will in fact be able to wake up every single day looking and feeling your best and living your most authentic life because that's exactly what you're doing thanks so much for tuning in today i wanted to make sure that i got these questions answered for you in more of a conversational type of approach and how I would coach you if you were inside the intermittent fasting course or if you were inside any of my coaching programs. Think, you've got what it takes to make informed decisions for yourself. Exercise that right.